On today's episode of The Snack Run, we taste test some Canadian snacks, reunite with an old friend, and speak with special guest, Jared Stotsky. And now introducing special guest, Alex Clips. Excellent. Been way too long, fellas. All right, so what we're going to be doing today is a bit of an international taste test. Uh, I just got back from visiting my family up north in Canada, and I brought back some, uh, some snacks for us to try. Um, There's some, some unique stuff up there. So I think we're going to start off with uh, a bit of a savory, savory snack. Uh, something we're very familiar with is potato chips, but uh, our Canadian neighbors have some uh, flavors unique to their own country. So I have my bag here. Whoa, whoa! Um, okay. Favorite Mystery bag? bag. Mystery bag. <laughs> and I think the first one we're gonna try is Lay's ketchup chips. Ooh. All right. I'll I'll say ketchup is probably one of my top seven favorite condiments. That's fair. I'll go I top to one. I'll go I'll top go. one. Oh, yeah. Top one. I, have, I, I might agree with that. Yeah. Not a huge fan of the look, but that's all right. All right. Let's get started. Give him a all try, right. boys. <clears throat> Mm. Mm. Thoughts? They did trigger my, uh, what they're called, uh, sal. <laughs> my, my gl- my sal with pork, um, <laughs> glands. A little bitter, a little tangy. Let mm. me have another chip. Maybe some umami flavor to it. Hold on. Mm. It does taste actually like ketchup, honestly. I know, yeah. I would say if I had to describe this to someone who'd never had it, I'd say mm. it's kind of like a. A salt and vinegar chip, but like with sweetness. I was just going to say the same chip. exact thing. But yeah, it feels kind of salt and vinegary plus like a blazed barbecue chip. I already put ketchup on chips, so this is like taking out the middleman. <laughs> oh. What type of chips do you use for... Potato chips. Just like plain? Plain, yeah. Okay. Tastes pretty similar. Similar? Mm-hmm. Not, not exactly the same, but <clears throat> close enough. I don't know. The p- powder like that makes me... Nervous. Mm. I don't know what they have powder. I'd eat them. It's a good yeah. snack, honestly. Yeah. I mean, especially the like fact that you can only really get them in Canada means that it's kind of like a forbidden fruit of sorts. Mm. So yep. I would say these honestly get my seal of approval with a give them a seven out of ten. I think it wouldn't be like if I went to a gas station, I wouldn't pick those off the shelf. But you know, no, 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 no more in Canada. If I was in Canada, because you said they're exclusive, I believe, in Canada, mm-hmm. you just have to get them for the experience. Score? <clears throat> Seven. Flat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, expectations were moderately low. I feel mm-hmm. like the funky Lay's flavors don't normally taste like very good, in my opinion. It exceeded those expectations, so I'll give it a 7.2. I would have mm-hmm. again. All right. Matt. If I was in a gas station, there's a solid chance I would get this chip. Mm. Um, I'll give it an 8.3. Oh, high score. Wow. Uh, personally, I don't eat chips very often, but if I'm judging this on a scale of chips, uh, <laughs> I'd give it like a 7.4. 7.4. Huh? Pretty good chip. Respect. That actually rounds us off to an average rating of... All right, so I actually have one more unique flavor of chips for us to try. Um, this is another Canadian classic, and these are all dress chips. Better coloring for sure on these. Yes. Okay, fair. Although, I'm gonna be honest. Let's get the powder. Powder, I'm telling you, it's the worst thing when you're, <laughs> you're looking at someone eating chips and they've got orange mm. fingers. <laughs> I'm sorry, but. <laughs> All right, well, let's see how it tastes. Yes. Mm. Tastes almost barbecue-y. Off bat, it's yeah. kind of a letdown. All dressed, kind of insinuated. I was expecting some type of clothing on the chips. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can see, you, Andy, look at that. Look at the powder, just from one chip. That's true, the powder. I mean, oh. I'm all set. What's that? Stick what do we the think ketchup. about these? The chips seem to bad. be less popular than the ketchup chips, but what do we have for ratings? 
I, I never could really get like a flavor profile of the chip. I wasn't really under, I couldn't really fully understand like what it was supposed to taste like. Um, I thought, I mean, I still like chips in general, so like flavorful. I'd give it like a 6.1, 6.2. I think though, honestly, it's still, it's still a good potato chip, even if the flavor isn't that strong, which I kind of disagree with. I think that in a good bag, at least the flavor tends to be pretty strong with these. Um, I would probably say solid potato chip either way. I'm gonna give these a seven and a half out of you, 10. I agree. I would go for these <clears throat> over ketchup. I'm telling you, if you just take one of these out. I mean, look, look at this red. They, they, they make me, I mean, they remind me of a, of a flaming hot Cheeto. That's why, they, <laughs> that's why that makes me nervous. But, you know, if I was going for them, and there's, I mean, like, these are plain, so these would definitely be more up my, essentially. Like, this one barely has anything. So these would be more, yeah, I'd prefer these, definitely. That's why, I'd, around the same rating, though, around 7. Give it a point two higher. 7.2, I'd say, for these. To me, it tastes like a, a watered-down barbecue sauce one, which is fine, but it's just not as good as barbecue. And obviously, I like the ketchup one a lot, so definitely not as much as the ketchup. So I'll give it a, give it a seven flat. Okay. And I would, uh, I'm no chip connoisseur, but I'd give it the same rating as the ketchup for me personally, so a seven four. All right, and that brings us to an average rating of All right, so we're gonna move on now to a couple sweet snacks. Um, so I guess we'll start off, this one I don't think is exclusively in Canada, but definitely Canadian. Uh, it's these, uh, I, don't, I don't even know like what they're called, but they're like these maple, maple leaf cookies. Maple sandwich cookies. Ma maple sandwich cookies, yeah. In the middle. Well, maple creme, right? The I do like the presentation. And this smell is very yes. good. Yes. Whoa. Give it a taste. Mm. I like this. I feel like the cookie on the outside is a little bit too big and a little bit too dry. Mm -hmm. So if they had like an Oreo with this filling, which is really good, I think that would be like an mm -hmm. elite cookie right there. Personally, I actually kind of like how like crumbly really? the outer cookie is. Yes. Personal <clears throat> preference. Um, See, as you go along crumbly, you know, one might argue about powder. <laughs> it doesn't linger on the fingers. It doesn't linger, you know? It's not sticky. It's not sticky, it's not, it doesn't linger, you know? Like if I use a napkin, it's not gonna turn color, like a chameleon. I do agree with you though. <clears throat> I wish there was actually like this much cream. Yeah, I agree. Cookie. This is some no, false no, advertising no. here, but. Do you wanna start us uh, off with a rating clips? Um, I do have a sweet tooth, so I feel a little biased there. Pretty good, you know, it, it's not sticky, you know, no powder. Um, pretty good cookie, I'd say 8-8. Eight, eight. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've definitely had some version of this. I don't know if it, I've had this brand before. Anything maple though, I just feel like it's going to be pretty good no matter what. Mm -hmm. It's just such a reliable flavor. And it's never like overly sweet unless you're having like pure maple syrup or something. Um, but the thing is, I do think it was, I wish there was a little bit more moisture in the cookie. And I would say even with that comment, definitely breaking the eight barrier. I think I'll give it an 8.5 out of 10. Wow. I really liked the smell of it. Was pretty excited for it. I can't put my finger on it, but I feel like I've had cookies similar to this. <laughs> Unfortunately, it didn't meet the standards that I was looking for, mm -hmm. so I still like it. I definitely have it again, but unfortunately, this might be the hottest take of the round, but I'll give it a 6.9. Really? Wow. Mm. Under the 7 barrier for me, which is a pretty low score. Huh. I don't have anything wrong with this cookie. I mean, all around, it's Did very you, tasty. Are you about to give it a... Perfect no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that good. I don't think we've ever seen a perfect 10 on no. this show. But other than clips. <laughs> I'll go as far to say this is yeah, a 9 flat. Be hands to I'll give this a 9 flat. 9 flat? 9! Wow. 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 Beat mine! Wow. Might be the wow. one of the first 9s we've I had. I think so. Yeah, yeah, wow. Wow. yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I'd go so as a 9, but I do really enjoy this cookie. Um, 
I'd probably give it maybe a 7 9. Okay. Yeah. I do wish there was a bit more cream, but the flavor itself is very good. Mm -hmm. I yeah. thought it would be like pretty consistent ratings, but I think we were more consistent for the chips, honestly, which yeah. surprises mm -hmm. me. But that brings Wait. us to an average rating of. <laughs> so I've got two more sweet snacks for us to try. Um, this next one I'm very excited about. Uh, this is a childhood favorite of mine. Oh, wow. Whoa. Right. So. I hope I can eat. I, I actually haven't tr tried it in a while, but I have high hopes because I remember these very fondly from my childhood. And these are. Oh. Gâteau wow. Vachon. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Say that again? Yeah. Gâteau Vachon. Oh, wow, wow. I will say, Can't when you take your first bite, try to get what? a bit, like, get a bit ring. into the circle. Are yeah. you 12 years old? Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. <laughs> mm. He just went for it. He didn't even see the cross section. You can show the cross section. Yeah. Five. Mm. Five. Wow. I'm looking at match. Uh, oh. I'll look at both. You know what? Actually, yours looks better. <laughs> <laughs> It looks it looks exceptional. Is it? I'm a fan of Gaucho Franchon. Like a mm -hmm. super light. Wait, how do you is say it? Light? How do you say Fluffy. it? Gaucho Vachon. Gaucho Vachon. Gaucho Vachon. I will say, this is how you're supposed to do like, like hostess cakes and Twinkies and all those I was things. Just gonna this say. is how you're supposed to do it. This I'm is like, it. Mm -hmm. I agree. Just exceptional. To go off of that, I feel like when you have a hostess cake and you eat like one or even a bite of it, you feel disgusting immediately after, even if it tasted good and you cannot eat another one. With yeah. these, I'm debating because like, they were light, they were fluffy. There was not an exorbitant amount of any of the individual ingredients and I feel like it balanced really nicely. Yeah. I don't think I could have two though. Like two yeah. in a pack I feel like is pushing it a bit. Mm. I feel like they should be individually packed. Mm. I don't know, I, want, I might just be in a bad mood or something, but like I liked it, it just felt basic. Like the chocolate tasted exactly like a ring ding or like a yo-ho, whatever those are called. Ho-ho. Oh, oh. The coke, the, the cake. <laughs> <laughs> the cake like didn't taste anything spectacular. Like it just felt pretty kind of par for the course. <laughs> um, I'd give it a seven, seven. But before we move on to another rating, I just gotta say something. I'm telling you, it, <clears throat> having a having that allergy. I mean, looking at that. I mean, you know, I, I, no matter whatever Danny has to say. Um, looking at that, I mean, is I want to indulge in it myself. But I'm telling you, you go to an ice cream shop, I get a peanut allergy. You go to a restaurant, I get a peanut allergy. I mean, that's why you know they got the they got a a way you can take little doses of peanuts. Which I might have to, might have to do. So I'll give it a, uh, <laughs> I think I'll give it a nine flat actually. Wow. Really good. I mean, you did one bite it too, right? I once yeah. throw it, yeah. And honestly, like, I feel like, especially like experiencing that entire thing at once, like all of the, the caramel and the, whatever it was, marshmallow or cream, whatever the top part was, and the cake and the chocolate all came together in a delicious symphony that was orchestrated by the most talented of pastry chefs. There's no reason that it should be below a nine because I enjoyed every second of it and it was wonderful. Hmm. Matt, did you enjoy it that much? Not that much, but it did remind me of when I was younger, um, I went to a Daiki Kim's house and he would have these Asian snacks, very similar to this. Huh. And they were better, so I... I can't give this one as high as a score that, um, and like I said, I, I don't think I could have multiple of these. I think one was like enough. So I'll give, I'll give it a, a 7 9. Personally, uh, like when I took a bite of this, I just had like a wave of nostalgia. Mm. So it's kind of hard to not be biased. I'm going to match Andy's rating of a 9.0. Uh -huh. Very nice. Both 8 flat. 8, eight flat. flat. Yeah. yeah. Alright, that brings us to an average rating of. <laughs> All right, moving on to our last taste test. Um, this is probably the most unique one. So uh, here in the States, we have Dunkin' Donuts, which we're all familiar with, and we, we know the munchkin. Um, well, up north, uh, they have an equivalent with Tim Hortons mm -hmm. and the Timbit. Wow. Now, I couldn't transport Timbits back. They would have been 
quite stale by now. But what I did pick up from the supermarket is Timbit's oh. breakfast cereal. Wow. Which I have never had, so I am also excited to try. Thank you. I actually, I mean, I don't like soggy cereal, but sometimes I do like to let mm -hmm. it sit in the milk for like a minute or something just to get it nice and like soggy. Okay. And then you get the yeah. like so chocolate milk in the end. Yeah. It tastes just like hot chocolate. I will say I go through phases where like I won't eat cereal for like two months. Then I happen to like rediscover it and eat it basically every meal for like a week straight and then go cold turkey again. Hmm. This could initiate a week straight of just cereal. Is mm -hmm. that good? What are our thoughts on Crave cereal, by the way? I know. Oh, that's what it smells like. That's what it smells <laughs> right? like. That's there yeah, I think I referenced this in one of our Zoom episodes that it was my favorite cereal. Yeah. But I feel like this reminds the taste reminds me a little bit of Crave cereal, and that's my go-to cereal. So I'm gonna rate this one pretty highly. I think I'll give it like an eight point six though. Very respectable. Mm. All right, I don't know if it's just because it tastes like Cocoa Puffs, but that's definitely my favorite favorite snack we've had so far today. I'm gonna go eight nine. I'd say it's very middle of the pack. Wow. What's your reasoning? You must have got well, I, I'm just not a big fan <laughs> of Cocoa Puffs in general. Oh. So, and this tastes just like Cocoa Puffs. So. Yeah. Rating? Six, seven. Pretty good. I'd give it a solid, actually I actually can't make the eight. Seven, nine. Mm. Seven, nine. Fair can't, enough. Can't go over eight. Let's do that. A little, a little bit overly like sweet for my taste but uh i'd give it i'd give it a seven right. Just right. that actually ends up bringing us to a average rating of in totality the ranking we had for the canadian snacks we tried today it's right up here So as we start to bring this episode to a close, we will throw in one more additional segment, and that is going to be our snack run do's and don'ts. So each of us is going to come up with one do, which is a food recommendation that we have for all of you, as well as one don't, which is another food related recommendation, this time for something that you should not do. And I can start things off for us. Um, my do is going to be download the McDonald's app <laughs> and hear me out on this one. So I'm not a frequent McDonald's customer and obviously it's not the best food for your body or anything, but it is delicious. And the McDonald's app, this is not an ad, I swear, <laughs> has gotten me a ridiculous quantity of free food and please sponsor us by the way, McDonald's. There's so many deals on there. It is quite the uh, quite the money saver, so I would definitely just go for that. And my don't, do not eat mayonnaise, whatever it takes. And I know that this one is a little bit of a hot take to some. I think it's a bit of a polarizing food. You either love it or you hate it. Mayonnaise is just, it's the bane of my existence. And here's why. Have you ever tasted mayonnaise and thought, mmm, that's delicious? No, it, it is... It's a vile condiment, and every time it touches your tongue, you think to yourself, why exactly am I here on this earth? I can go next. Um, for my do, I'm going to say do uh, eat cold pizza. Yes. Wow, yes. great. I'm a big fan of cold pizza. Great. Um, you, order, you order pizza, you obviously order way more than you're actually going to eat, mm -hmm. so you've got the leftovers in the fridge. Now, you could microwave it and have a floppy, soggy piece of pizza True. but what i would recommend is just take it right out of the fridge and eat it it stays nice and firm and it is a completely different experience from eating hot pizza uh now my don't uh is going to be this is a bit of a niche one but don't throw away vegetable scraps when i was at school and i would like cut up vegetables to make something i'd save the scraps and then you can turn it into like soup and stuff so if you want to be a bit resourceful, 
Uh, I'd say don't throw away your vegetable scraps right away. I like it. I yeah. love it. For my do, uh, do put chips in your sandwich. Hmm. Uh, I think it adds a great added crunch, some necessary texture, and it can cover up some sogginess with the, whether it's with the bread, sauce, or meats. Uh, especially if you're at the beach, adding in chips to your sandwich is almost required. Yeah. Now for my don't, um, I'm going to just tell for a quick story real quick. <clears throat> so I was going on this uh, hiking slash camping trip with someone who will not be named. Um, and so I was on this trip with Will Levy, <laughs> and, <laughs> and we were making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And I had the jelly already out on a piece, and I was getting my other peanut butter side. And I'm looking around in the cabins and everything, and I say, oh, where's the peanut butter? And he says, oh, it's in the fridge. So now my huge don't is do mm. not put your peanut butter in the refrigerator. Mm. It does not need to be chilled. Room temperature peanut butter mm -hmm. is ideal. If you put it in the fridge, it gets chunky and hard, and it's just, it's not good. Room temperature peanut butter is at where, where to go. Uh, my do is, on theme with today, putting ketchup on chips. I used to do it all the time, and back when I used to go to camp, I used to like, get a bag of chips and fill the bag with ketchup, and then mush it up, and then have like a giant ball of chip ketchup. And it was so good. Oh, Wait, so are these dudes? Are these dudes or don'ts? <laughs> these are dudes. <laughs> and my don't is don't get the cornbread donut from Dunkin' Donuts. It is quite possibly the worst donut ever made. So, actually, on Andy's point, it's going to be my, it's going to be my do, actually. Mayonnaise is actually, you know, it's iffy. It can be bad. I'll put that on. However, if you're going to not put that on a sandwich or if you're going to put it on a sandwich, don't put it on. Put olive oil on your sandwich. Ooh. Drizzle some olive oil. That's all you need. As well, you should be having a good amount of olive oil daily. It's very good for the health. And it just tastes amazing. It makes the bread a little, you know, gives a little touch, a little touch of, you know, softness as well. You know, gives a nice little flavor as long as the meat with all the vegetables and everything just tastes unbelievable. <clears throat> Don't. Back, you know, the theme was powder, powdery substances today, Ed. <laughs> and, um, you know, so we have a, there's a Greek dessert called Quinebedis, uh, and uh, they're a sugar cookie with pretty much uh, a snow, like snow fall of powdered sugar on it. And um, I would not advise bringing that to um, a party because uh, most people will choke on them. And <laughs> most people will have powdered sugar all over their clothes all over there you would see it dribble down you know and you know if you don't want a house full of powdered sugar all over the floor don't bring those but they do taste good thanks for joining us on today's episode of the snack run another great season two episode here solid season so far and hopefully we'll keep coming in with some more great content as the summer goes on jared stotsky we did have to bump you unfortunately um, we just ran out of time. Next episode, I think, should work for that. Um, but for our guest that was here today, we want to give a huge thank you to returning guest, Alex Klapes. It was a great episode. Yeah, good to see you. Thank you. Number two, host, host number two. Thank you. All right. Shout out Bob Odenkirk.